Implats has released interim results. Revenue decreased 2% to 15.2 billion rand and headline earnings per share came in 78% lower. We caught up with Terence Goodlay, CEO at Implats. It's a very challenging time. Uh, we, there's a huge amount of stakeholder expectation. Um, as you said, in terms of demands coming at, at, at us left, right and centre. At the same time, we're not getting the productivity levels that uh, would offset some of these cost increases. Mm -hmm. Of course, a big component of that uh, is related to your labour costs. So let's start off there. I mean, uh, you haven't been as badly impacted as uh, some of your counterparts within that mining industry. But, uh, you know, you've got to ask the question now, what's your sense of how stable a labour force you're looking at right now and how you're managing those labour relations? Yeah, we've had to be... Uh, very cognizant of what's happening on the labour market. We had our strike in early last year. Uh, since then, it's been relatively stable. We've been working in a changing labour environment. Uh, right now, the new union, AMCU, has grown to approximately 50%. We've officially de-recognised the National Union of Mine Workers. And, and we're looking for a new dispensation. So all of that is absolutely necessary to, to calm the waters and, and get Labour back on board to understand the situation we find ourselves in and ultimately allow the industry to once, once again survive, grow and prosper. Mm -hmm. You uh, highlighted, of course, that uh, you know, you've got labour costs to deal with moving forward. Uh, you've got electricity costs to deal with as well. And that's had miners specifically up in arms, uh, the 16% tariff hike increases that we're looking at coming through from ESCOM. What do you see that doing? Uh, to business and profitability moving forward? Yeah, we're very concerned uh, the, from an industry perspective and from an implants perspective. We've already had a 238% increase over the last five years. We've gone from 18 cents per kilowatt hour to 61 cents per kilowatt hour. To double that up to 120 cents per kilowatt hour is huge. I mean, at, at the moment, uh, it's 12% of our costs. Uh, at about a billion rand every six months. And if you start doubling that, that's very serious for us. It's less than helpful. And uh, I would seriously hope that NERSA apply their minds to these increases that have been put forward by ESCOM because they are absolutely unsustainable. Yeah, we've uh, had some miners breaking ranks with the industry, coming to separate agreements. I mean, do you see a return to collective bargaining or has this landscape changed forever and you've got to now deal with a different way of doing things? We, we definitely have a different way of deal, dealing with things. We have commenced a centralised engagement process, which wasn't something that was in place for, for the platinum industry. And uh, while we go through this changing environment, uh, we haven't signed anything with, with, any, with organised labour, but certainly we look, uh, moving forward, we want to get centralised engagement back on track. Yeah, of course, so we have uh, having to deal now with higher wages. Uh, are the higher wages settled on going to have an ongoing impact on profitability of the company? Because this essentially means a higher cost base that you're having to deal with moving yes. forward. If you look at our cost base, I mean, 51% of our cost base is, is labour. 38% consumables and around 12% electrical power. So it has a huge impact on us. Uh, we've got to a position where you can see the profitability, even at a company like Implats, where we, we're struggling to, to even uh, to operate at a break even with the current market conditions. Mm -hmm. With that, uh, we've seen the news come through this morning that uh, you're going to be issuing a $500 million convertible bond to prop up uh, this ba balance sheet moving forward. I mean, take us through why you've opted to go down this route of raising capital. Yes, we, we believe in the platinum market. And, and right now there's, there's turmoil across the world. Um, we, we're struggling and, and we want to be in, this is a long-term business and we want to be in the game few years hence and it's absolutely necessary for us to continue with our major shaft projects number 16 number 17 and 20 shaft because we're depleting all of the older shafts so if there's no renewal where is the platinum going to come from are you concerned at all of the risk of running out of shareholder willingness to put up new capital no i don't think so a lot of our shareholders believe in in the platinum group metals and and on that basis uh, 
they have to say, well, where's the supply going to come from? And, and the companies that are in the game are going to benefit. So if we look at the supply side of things from your end, I mean, we've seen a 25% fall in production at your Rustenburg mines. When do you foresee the company getting, uh, or the mine getting back to full production? Uh, because Amplatz has taken off uh, some production from the market in a bid to stabilize uh, prices. Why are you going to simply let Amplatz take, take that production knock? Well, they haven't taken it off yet because there's a moratorium on everything as far as Amplatz is concerned. We have naturally reduced uh, our production levels. If you look at what Impala Platinum has produced over the six-month period, it's only 368,000 ounces versus what it was before. Uh, it's going to be a struggle for us to build back up again. So I see that the production levels, because of our ore reserve inflexibility, staying at, at the lower levels rather than the higher levels. To exacerbate this, uh, I'm pushing very hard on the safety side. We're doing a huge amount of internal safety stoppages. I mean, just in the last six months, it's been over 1,500 stoppages. And on top of that, we do get the Section 54s. So it's, it's going to be a struggle to, to, in actual fact, increase production again. Mm -hmm. How much of a struggle is it going to be doing business in Zimbabwe? Because it seems that when it comes to your operations on that end, you're closing one mole hill after the next. I mean, you've just dealt with handing over 51% stake to uh, local black Zimbabweans. And now we're got, we've got headlines uh, reading around land seizure and, uh, you know, uh, that coming through for the company as well. Yeah. I mean, we've, we have to abide by the law in, in that country. And, and we've signed off the indigenization term sheets. I mean, the definitive documentation is underway and it needs to be completed for Zimbabwe, for Zimplats by the, by the end of June and for Mimosa by, by March. So we need to, need to get through that. Uh, these latest statements, we've, we've seen nothing official. And, and until such time as we see something official, uh, you know, then we can react. Okay, so nothing official on the table right now. As things stand at the, at the moment, is it still worth being in Zimbabwe? If you look at operating in that environment, if you look at the resources that are available, uh, the costs of, of producing in, in that country are very, very competitive. It's highly productive. It's a very skilled workforce. And, and it's actually a pleasure operating on the mine, at a mine level in Zimbabwe. Outlook moving forward uh, for the company as we move into this new year? It's going to be tough for, for some time. Uh, that's the reason for, for the convertible. But we need to, to stick to the knitting. Uh, we need to focus again on, on development, equipping, construction and, and ledging to get more ore reserve flexibility. We also need to really ramp up our production at the two new shafts. 20 shaft is now is now almost six months into its ramp up and we start with the 16 shaft um, in July we already start ramping up from from that mine.